Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content. Today we're going to be playing a team from a very strong Japanese player. Uh, as you might be aware or might not be aware, the Japan National Championships will be taking place this year. They've had two qualifying events so far. They had the first one mixed in with our Players Cup 4 qualifiers uh, and then the second phase of that for the, the progressing players was done this past weekend and uh, Twitter handle Jaru he's one of the, the the strongest Japanese players he was the 2016 national champion as well so he's got a, a bunch of accolades to his name uh, he finished third in the second phase of the qualifiers with this particular team kind enough to share it as well uh, all his socials will be linked down below his Twitter his YouTube channel his blog all that so do check him out check the blog out give him a follow and uh, YouTube as well uh, but it's very exciting to kind of be able to feature this team today for one particular reason of course is going to be that Tapu Bulu a Pokemon that's never really seen much usage in Sword and Shield since it was kind of introduced because of Rillaboom obviously kind of taking its place uh, and Tapu Bulu being a little bit forgotten about so it's kind of that's the big thing that jumps out at you but there's also the the unconventional set of the the Glastria as well with that body press and iron defense so you've got the ability to use Glastria in a sense where you want to Dynamax it get that momentum kind of build in the momentum switch switch uh with the chill in there ability picking up knockouts getting those attack boosts but you've also got the kind of fallback when it's not dynamax to take advantage of that iron defense body press combination that works so well so it's got that real two-dimensional ability to it we I mean, can see down there as well i'm i'm not purposely hiding ally switch but it is there on the dust club so we've got a little bit of funsies to have as well with the team um obviously this is a rental we'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do we'll give it a pilot and then we'll finish up with the rental at the end let me know your thoughts thoughts on Tapu Bulu because it is it's just not a topic that's even talked about I like Tapu Bulu but from a competitive point of view probably not as strong as something like Rillaboom but I'm hoping today's episode can change my mind on that because uh, as soon as I saw it, it was something that I wanted to uh, to try out so hopefully that is the case but with that friends without further ado let's get into our first match of today okay first up today we have a Grimmsnarl Charizard Urshifu Whimsicott Metagross and Tapu Fini so uh you can see it's kind of a hybrid team between Metagross and Charizard you've got the screen support from Grimmsnarl gonna be pretty predominant uh for most of the strategies going on here for my opponent either getting the metagross kind of support and a little bit extra with potentially weakness policy there or the charizard just to uh give it a little bit more staying power with the screens uh there's probably speed control on the grim snarl something like scary face or potentially uh, thunder wave there so we've got to be a little bit careful around that of course uh, more likely scary face with the tapu finny being there with the the, uh, the misty terrain um and then you've got speed control primarily speed control going to be either airstream on the charizard if they go down that route or tailwind on the whimsicott so what do we do here you know the other thing to mention is the dusclops doesn't have trick room it's kind of like a bluff almost which is sometimes not the, the worst thing in the world um You've got to say Landorus is probably going to be our best kind of shout here. I do like Tapu Bulu for the fact that we can deal with both the Urshifu and the Tapu Fini, but we've got to be very careful around something like the Charizard, which can be a little bit uh, awkward, to say the least. Um, so Landorus, let's go Lando, let's go Aleki, let's go Bulu, and let's go... Yeah, let's go Glastria. You know, Incineroar makes a lot more sense for the fact that, like, Metagross is there. It gives us a switch into something like Charizard. But we've got to have some sort of, like, big powerhouse here. I know we've got we've got Pokemon there, but I think Glastria would be nice to bring in this situation where you can potentially get, like, a Body Presser, uh, uh, an Iron Defense or two up, and then uh, and then go from there. i be careful around the Metagross, but I don't particularly see my opponent bringing both the Charizard and the Metagross to this. They feel like kind of two different elements to the team where you've got like two options. Uh, we are going to see Tapu Fini come out uh, with the Whimsicott. So you've got Speed Control straight away, you've got Tailwind, um, got Fake Tears as well. Tapu Fini kind of pinned in a, in a, a bit of an awkward position my opponent doesn't really have any switch into those electric type attacks either um and i feel like i probably want to switch yeah i'm going to switch in bulu here and i'm going to go for a i just go for a vault switch into um finny and we'll try and get something like glastria out onto the field 
and preserve Regieleki for later on this match, which feels a little bit better. At least by getting Bulu in as well, we can uh, overwrite the Misty terrain, which is always useful. I'm kind of interested to see what my opponent's going to go for. Just Tailwind and, and Calm Mind, maybe? Or Tailwind Moonblast? Tailwind Muddy Water? I don't know. But yeah, you don't add speed as... Oof, 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 oof. <laughs> you won't add speed Regieleki with Tapu Fini. Like, yeah, it's just not going to happen, is it? Um, yeah, and just bring Glastria in. I think the worst case scenario here would be like Scald into Glastria and getting the burn. But touch wood, that doesn't happen. Just Muddy Water coming out, so that's fine. Fair enough. I don't mind that at all. Um... We've got a we've got the perfect opportunity here, you know, to go for uh, oh, the accuracy drop is not ideal, uh, and iron defense if we want. Um, we've got to keep in mind now is a good time for my opponent if they got the Charizard in the back. Uh, you could really get the Char in and, and do do some work, um, where we could potentially just try and clear the field with something like. Like a snarl, a snarl's good from the Tapu Bulu here. Maybe it does and gleams a little bit more uh, useful, but will it get the knockout onto the Finny? I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but it would give us the opportunity to break the Sash, where a Horn Leech would just be just be safer, and an Icicle Crash into the Whimsicott could be the play. But I do feel like an Iron Defense could be could be more useful. Um, Especially if they've got the Metagross in the back, it does give us a little bit more leeway, you know? I just don't like leaving the Whimsicott kind of free to just do what it wants, but I feel like it's probably an opportunity now where we can potentially get... Oh dear! Fake Tears coming out. Uh, where are we going? Okay, on to uh, Glastia. And then Moonblasting as well. Alright, well that's not ideal, but... Yeah. It kind of forces us to switch out though, but it does mean that we are going to be able to get rid of the, the Finny, but it does open the door for my opponent to potentially bring something else in that can take advantage of the um, the Tailwind while it's in effect. And a big job here is, yeah, this is where we've made a mistake, I think. The Iron Defense, like the, the fi without the Fake Tears, this would have been a lot better, but obviously with the Fake Tears, it's kind of put Glastria into a, a bit of an awkward position where it has got leftovers, it has got... Uh, the grassy train kind of restoring its health but at the same time i don't know if it's going to be if it's going to be uh kind of worthwhile for us to do so see what my opponent yeah is the charizard okay well i mean that's it. <laughs> it's probably better than the metagross at this point um although it makes things very difficult for us because i think you know we have got the sash on Bulu, so that, that that helps us out a bunch. Um, and maybe we just sack. It's just like, what have they got in the back? Because that's what we've got to keep in mind. Probably the Urshifu, right? Probably Urshifu. I'd imagine Urshifu. So we can, yeah, I think we Snarl here. Reduce the damage output of the, the Charizard. Break the Sash on the Whimsicott. Um, and then we, I think, just go for an Icicle Crash into Wimmy. Because there's potential here, if they attack into the Bulu, we're Sashed. I'll take us down to our Sash, we'll get the Snarl off. We'll then be able to, unless we see like a black, G Max Wildfire and Dazzling Gleam, that would be bad, but I don't know if we will. Um, but they may attack into Glastria as well, that's the other That's the other option for my opponent here. We could go after Glastria, but then it just leaves Bulu kind of free to just Snarl the next turn as well. So Moonblast coming out into Bulu. So they're going after the Glastria, I would imagine. Okay, so we do get the Snarl. That's fine. It just opens the door now for us to get Regieleki onto the field. Uh, or Landorus, you know. I think Landorus would, might not be too bad. Um, just the Wimmy's going to be a bit more difficult to kind of deal with. Then we see the G-Max Wildfire residual damage starting as well, which isn't great. But it's probably a good time for us to potentially just max Regieleki here. Um, but at the same time, kind of doing that. Uh, it's 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 tough because their tailwind ends now. Oh no, their tailwind! They got one more turn of tailwind. We're probably better getting uh, Landorus onto the field, especially with the assault vest. The issue is the fake tears that makes it a little bit more tricky. Um, I 
Yeah. Do we just snarl again or do we dazzle gleam? I think we've got to go after the Charizard because we can't just let that thing just keep firing off attacks. And do we protect with Bulu here? Or do we just dazzle? I mean, we're probably better off horn leeching into Wimmy because then, you know. And go rock fall, yeah. I want to get rid of the Wimmy, but I can't really afford to. I think that the, the turn earlier where it was where we made the mistake going for the iron defense where we should have probably even maxed at that point with, with Glastria and just got rid of Wimmy because I think the thing is with, with speed control, you want to get rid of the kind of tailwinder in the turns of tailwind. So they don't have the opportunity to get that tailwind up again. And we've we've kind of been a bit passive in the in the way that we've dealt with it there. Moonblast coming out. Can we take it? I don't know. Yeah, we should do. Yeah, so that's good. GMAX Wildfire coming out and uh, into uh, Landorus this time. So that's not too bad. The the Assault Fest allows us to take that like super well. Only shall allow Bulu to kind of stick around another turn, especially with the, uh, the Grassy Terrain boosting us, which is always useful. And, um, ooh, critical hit there. Definitely helps us out a bunch. Probably means we take another Moon Blast, though, which is nice. And then the Rockfall going to be enough to get the Zard here, for sure. Um, nice that we didn't see the Fake Tears, because that was a combination I definitely thought we'd probably see from the Wimmy kind of coming out onto Landorus, which is, it's probably good that we don't see that. And then we've got Regieleki left in the back. Even if it is Urshifu, the Grassy Terrain will end uh, before the Sandstorm does. So the Sandstorm should be able to uh, to chip away at the um, at the Sash potentially there. Ooh, G-Max Wildfire, probably putting Bulu out of, uh, out of range of the, um, in range of the, the Moonblast, I should say. So the Tailwind pittering out there. And that's the option there. Do we get rid of the, the Whimsicott that turn? Or do we go after... Oh, it is the Metagross. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this now. I don't know how I feel. Okay, well, Ice Punch probably going to do a bunch of damage to us. Um, I think we go for another Horn Leech while the Grassy Terrain's up. And... We have to just Max Quake, I think. I think we just go max quick. I don't know if the Metagross will be able to take us down with an Ice Punch. If that's what they go for. But a max quick should be enough to get the Metagross regardless. Oh, they're going Rock Slide. Ulu doesn't take it, unfortunately. Um, but we're kind of all right now. Uh, Lander is going to save the day for us. Yeah, I still feel like we messed up with that, that one turn with the Glastria where we, we, we were kind of predicting maybe the Metagross to come in at that point where it was the Charizard. Um, and I think just getting rid of the Whimsicott or at least taking it down to a Sash. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to think, is the Sash on the Wimmy or is it on the Urshifu? Uh, it's more likely on the Whimsicott, I'd imagine. Because uh, in this sort of build, you'd think that the Urshifu is probably banded. Um, so, yeah, just getting it down to a point where we could have knocked it out before it got that second tailwind up would have been would have been better for us. But unfortunately, um, you know, we've we've been able to to be quite fortunate with being able to pull this one back just with the, the Pokemon choices that we've got here. Uh, yeah, we just got. Uh, let's go for a rising voltage. I don't think I've uh, really used that too much, and uh, we'll go airstream as well. And that should wrap the game up for us. There's no way this Wimmy's taken down either of these Pokemon here. So we'll be able to get at least a win for this turn. where well, this game won anyway. Um, not the cleanest that I would have liked to. Uh, like I say, I think there was missed opportunities in this one. But, you know, when you're, you're first playing a new team built by another player, of course, there's going to be, like, those teething issues. So you're going to have to get used to it. It's just kind of being able to identify where you you possibly went wrong or possibly made a, uh, the wrong selection on Team Preview. And went from there but um we do pick up the win good game to garland and uh we'll jump into game two and see if we can have a little bit more of a streamlined game for our second one to wrap up today okay next up today we have a heatran rillaboom grim snarl zapdos urshifu and lander Asterian. so kind of flavor of the week at the moment is heatran picking up a lot of usage so it's nice to kind of be able to go up against one here predominantly going to be probably carrying the sugar berry here speed control on my opponent's team you're looking at airstream from zapdos or the lander Asterian, and then you're probably looking at speed control on the grim snarl either scary face or thunder wave because the 
the speed control options are a bit lackluster outside of Airstream, so it would make a lot of sense for it to be on there. So something for us to kind of keep in mind, watch out for. Um, Heatran is going to be a bit awkward for us to deal with, uh, and it, it gives Glastria Tapabulu a hard time for sure. Um, Incinera don't really have ways outside of Snarl to kind of hit it, so we're relying heavily on Landris here. So Landris is going to be a big kind of player for us in particular. Um... Hmm. Landorus can do a really good job. It's just a screen support from the Grimmsnarl that makes it a little bit more difficult to, to deal with, of course. Um, I think Incineroar... Hmm. Incineroar Landorus feels like a good enough a good enough lead. Uh, we probably want... Uh, I think... Let's go Bulu here, because I do feel like Bulu can do some work for us. And maybe Regieleki is our last one, I think, just for a bit more firepower. It gives us the speed advantage on pretty much everything, uh, especially if we can kind of negate the, the airstream support from my opponent and deal with that Grim Snarl early on so we don't have to kind of toy with the idea of, like, Scary Face or something like that, which could be a little bit problematic for us, to say the least, especially against something like Urshavu, which is such a powerhouse, you know. Uh, Rillaboom something as well. We need to kind of keep in mind that it could be a little bit awkward for us to uh, to, to deal with, of course. Um, what are we going to see here? Urshavu has to protect, right? Turn 1 has to protect. Has to. So we could fake out. We could go into Grimmsnarl, fake out, Airstream, be a bad play but I don't know if it's worth maxing here because the Urshifu definitely is in that horrible position where it has to protect or it goes down to a fake out airstream right um but Lando could potentially just we could max get an airstream up and then kind of it puts us in a nice position going into turn two of course um the issue would be of course that if the Urshifu just decides to attack here with like uh, a wicked blow up would be bad but we're not going to see that uh, as they are going to reposition lander is coming in from my opponent makes a lot of sense um but we're going to be in a position next turn where we can go for another airstream and then in we're going to be able to get a parting shot off onto that, that lander and that would then allow us to get something like a uh, type of bulu onto the field which will uh, at least help us kind of slow what my opponent's trying to do down a little bit anyway. Um, you would imagine Grimmsnarl here isn't going to go down to a, a minus one airstream, but it will do a, a, a significant amount of damage at least, you know, um, and, and prevent it from being able to do very much with uh, screen support or anything of its prankster abilities. Can't discount the fact that it could have like lag and tail or something like that, which is always nasty to see or eject button. Let's hope it's not anything like that um but yeah you can never really tell so i think yeah here what we're going to do is go for the parting shot into the pause and landers um do we go after the grim snarl again with another airstream it probably makes sense to just in case it kind of they go for the scary face at least we can kind of try and keep pace yeah they're gonna max their lando the big problem here would be scary face onto our landorus. It would mean that we aren't going to get the, the airstream. So then Incineroar is kind of like the sitting duck almost here to take a max quake, which would not be ideal at all. Um, but you're kind of hoping that we're going to see maybe a reflect here. Trick coming out. Okay, we're going to see the lagging tail as the other option. Ooh, full incense. So there we go. Uh, well do lose our assault vest but it could be worse we do remove the grim snarl before it gets any screen support up and then it does mean like i say we're going to be able to get uh incineral with the um <clears throat> the parting shot into that lander let's take it down to minus one and hope that they go max quake into um the the incineral slot which i'm kind of hoping that they do but you can never you can never tell but it would be that would be the best option here for us. Max airstream into Incineroar wouldn't be good because Bulu's not going to appreciate that. But let's see what my opponent goes for. He got a couple of options, I think. Unless they just want to go after Landorus and leave Incineroar alone, and that'd be fine. Yep. Okay. Well, Bulu gets a free free switch in here, but I don't think it's a Pokemon that we're going to leave out because I think it makes sense to cycle in Incineroar this next turn. 
Uh, we do have the full incense, so we're going to be slow than pretty much everything. But if the Urshifu comes onto the field, then it does give us that kind of, uh, with the Intimidate, potentially the ability to um, to at least get an attack off onto it, which is always useful, uh, and put the opposing landers down to kind of minus one, which is which is helpful. And I think Bulu is going to be quite important for when that landers isn't maxed uh, for helping kind of deal with that, uh, because Regilecki isn't really kind of isn't up to the task of it uh incineral can help out a bunch of course we can cycle intimidate but we're kind of limited with what we can cycle at the minute especially with landers out on the field but we'll see do they double up into uh into our landers i mean they can go for airstream of course and then um the wicked blow and hope to try and pick up a knockout but i don't know if that's necessarily going to be the best thing to do do you see the detect and i don't mind that play too much you know it means we've got that free fake out the next turn potentially if we want to um and they're just going after the landers again so instead of getting a kind of a free ride here back in um and getting the speed boost onto incineral which is useful but not so much when we're kind of just matching my opponents uh but breaking the sash on that incineral uh, on the urshifu is, is super super useful Okay, well, the lander is minus two. Definitely helps us out a bunch. They're just not not going to be as uh, as useful <clears throat> at all. So uh, we may see a max quake here from the opposing um, landerus, but we do have the option to go for the fake out into the Urshifu here, which is probably not a bad play. I don't know if we'll see them switching out. In what they're going to switch to. Mm, do they have the Heatran? I don't know. I'm going to just go for... It's pointless going for a fly here, I think. I think we're probably better off preserving our Intimidate as well. The double Intimidate's proven pretty useful. Yeah, they're going to switch. Okay. Switch Max Quake. And he's going to be the Tran. The Tran coming in. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I'm pleased with seeing it. And also not pleased at the same time. Max Airstream again. Okay. Well, we'll take that, and then Landris at least gets to come back in with the Intimidate once more. Um, Reggie Alecki is probably our best bet to come in and help us deal with the uh, the uh, the Heatran, at least. You know, uh, we do have Snarl, which we're going to have to utilize, I think, here um, with Incineroar. And now my opponent's max turns are finished. The thing is, what we need to consider is, do they keep Landorus? Like, switch it out. Because it's minus two at this point, right? Do they switch it out to Urshifu? Um, we've got to snarl. We've got to snarl, I think, here. And probably protect Aleki. I think it's probably the best, the best plan of action. I could see the Landorus switching out here. I can't see them going for an earthquake. It just makes no sense. Um, I mean, they could rock slide, hope for a flinch, but it make oh, they're not switching unless they just u turn in at this point. Okay, they're going earthquake. Wow. Wow. Okay. There we go. I don't. Yeah, it's it's a it's a strange play because the grassy terrain obviously helping us out a bunch. Like, Earth Power will take us down, of course, from the Heatran onto Aleki. And Aleki's probably too important for... Uh, uh, is it worth getting the, the attack damage onto the Heatran now? Because um, it got to double up into us, right? I think we Snarl again. And do we just Volt Switch at this point? I think probably Volt Switching's better. Because now they're kind of pinned. They can't go for the Earthquake. They have to switch out into Urshifu. Oh, the Rock Slide. Okay. Fishing for that flinch, but I don't think you're going to get it. Nah. Okay. That's fine. And I think here what we'll do is we'll bring in Landorus. Because I think with with the Incense, it's probably the, 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 the least useful Pokemon we've got access to at the minute. It's not going to hit before anything else. Um, and Aleki's way more important. And also the Bulu as well. The Bulu is like super important to help us deal with the Urshifu and the Landorus. So we don't really want to bring that in right now. Uh, and we do get a free switch, which is very useful, as well as a Snarl, which is always going to help kind of just 
weaken the opposing Heatran, which is always nice. Um, right, well, the Grassy Train hasn't got too many turns left, so we kind of want to put off by bringing in something like... Okay, well, the Earthquake's powered up now. But you are minus... Minus, hmm. Do we parting shot? We're going to be the slowest thing on the field, so we can parting shot pretty safely into that slot. And then, I think... Maybe we just rock slide. Because we'll probably go down. Oh, we could U-turn as well. We could U-turn and, like, double up into the Landorus and hope they go for Earthquake here, maybe. I don't know if they will. It's like, like at this point, you want to get the Urshifu onto the field. I think if you're my opponent, ah, they're just going to go for those rock slides. Okay. A heat wave will take Lando down, I would imagine. Yeah. Okay, well, we lose Lando, but that's that's still all right. We're going to get another parting shot off. We'll get Bulu back onto the field, and we'll get Regilecki next to it. So... We can take down the Heatran with Aleki, go for a Horn Leech into uh, into the Landorus, and we still got Incineroar to kind of bring in with that Intimidate Fake Out disruption for later in this game. So, yeah, we should be should be okay. We should be okay, I think, because a Horn Leech will get the Landorus for sure. The Landorus is minus three at this point, and you're kind of pinned where you can't. You, you like literally cannot switch the Landorus out to Urshifu because the Hornleech will probably take down the Urshifu as well. Um, you're just thinking of ways for... Yeah, I mean, we just we just rise in voltage here and just go for the Hornleech because Regilecki will take an Earthquake at this point. Might put us in Sucker Punch range, but at that, at that stage, you know, um, we've, got, we've got Bulu, which is going to be able to kind of help with the, the the dazzling gleam see here Ooh, gonna see a u-turn okay that's fine really don't do not mind this one little bit because you bring that urshifu in take a big fat horn leech yeah I mean, we could have really played it a bit, you know, doubling in on the the Urshifu there with the Regilecki as well. Okay, we don't we don't quite pick up the knockout, um, but I think they're forced to go sucker punches next turn, which then allows us to. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do, hmm, like what I want to do is go after the the Heatran again with a a, vol, a vol switch or a rising voltage into that slot, switch in Incineroar. But at the same time, do they switch in Landorus for Heatran, expecting us to attack into that? Where we could just Volt switch into Urshifu, switch into Incineroar, and then preserve Tapu Bulu, I think. Yeah, and get rid of the... And we got to hope that the, the Heatran switches out here. I don't know if it's going to... And a minus one Sucker Punch, we should take with Regieleki. We should take. We'll, we'll soon find out, though. We'll soon find out, because I'm sure that's what my opponent's got to go for. There's a Sucker Punch yet. Yeah, which we take. And then Regilecki out of harm's way uh, for one more final turn. As we probably... Oh, this is the bad thing, though, of bringing Bulu in now. I mean, the Heatran is minus one, right? Unless they go for Earth Power into Bulu. We do have the Sash as well, so we're not in the, like, the worst, the worst position. Heatwave, minus one. Oof, does so much damage. No crits either. <laughs> okay. Um, not so good, not so good. But I don't think... Mm -hmm. Rock Slide probably takes us from the, the, the Landorus. The Landorus is a big thing. Now, now what they need to do is just remove... Wow. Yeah, I mean, Landorus, Aleki is like the, the, the ideal situation for my opponent. So, Landorus is obviously the big thing that we need to remove as soon as possible. And what do they do? Do they just rock slide? I would imagine so. And I don't know if Bulu will outspeed the Heatran. We are minus one, of course. 
Okay, let's try and have a look what speed stat is Bulu here. If we're max speed, I would be I would be confident that we'll well, we are. I think we'll outspeed the Heatran. Yeah, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Horn Leech into Heatran. Ah, it's not gonna get it though. I'm minus one. It really isn't, is it? I think we've got to fake out the Heatran and just Horn Leech and hope that we survive the rock slide. Are they earthquaking? There's no way they earthquake. They've got a rock slide. And we could have faked out and just horn leech the um the lando. Wow, we outspeed the landerus, which is interesting. Are they gonna go fly here, maybe? Because we're we're in that awkward Oh, they're gonna earthquake. Huh. This is just this should just proc a berry on the incinero then. Yeah. Bulu gets to see another day. All right, well, because hmm. all we need to do now is get Regieleki onto the field. Um, but they got the perfect opportunity to rock slide Earth Part into Incineroar now, and that makes it quite difficult for us. But then we could potentially just call that and go for a Horn Leech into Landorus this turn. And do we point shot out? Mm. I think parting shot out onto the Landorus here. And see. I think we might be playing into this this double up into Incineroar here. Potentially. When they might just rock slide and heat wave. Yeah, so we're seeing the heat wave come out. This Lando's well slow. Really slow. There's a rock slide. Oh, and we avoid. Okay, we get pretty fortunate there. It wouldn't have taken us down, but there's always a chance to to flinch us, you know. Um. And now Regieleki can come in. The problem with Regieleki is we've not got too many turns left where it's uh, it's going to be able to uh, to do much damage. And I think what we probably have to do here is. Uh, I think the Heatran's just out of touch, but we could double up into the Heatran, to be honest. Or, or what we do is, we switch to Incineroar, and we just protect Aleki this turn. Get a little bit more health back, and then we got the fake out. Especially if they go protect Earthquake this turn, then we know we've got... We, we're going to be able to get the uh, the Heatran the following turn, because they, they then they can't... Uh, protect and then it's it's Bulu versus minus two Landorus. So that will work out. Let's see if we can manipulate this. Come on, Heatran. We want to see a protect here. We want to see a protect. Yeah, we want to see an earthquake as well. <coughs> yeah, okay. Well, Incineroar will take this. Just with the grassy terrain, of course. Ah. <sighs> You see, there's, there's still the issue of, is the, oh, I mean, what we do is we fake out and we Volt Switch. Yeah, we don't, we don't go for Rise and Voltage just yet. This is still going to be like, they play out a bit, a bit more difficult. Yeah, uh, fake out Heatran, Volt Switch, and then get Bulu back onto the field. Right. Get a grassy terrain up. Pray that they go earthquake and then it'll be over. But I don't know if they're going to do that. They probably rock slide here. But they've shown U-turn as well, so they could potentially go for that. But I think at this point it doesn't really make too much difference. There's a rock slide, yeah. Let's see what the damage is like. Not really, not really enough at all. So I think here what we do, protect Bulu and just snarl. Yeah. And we could flare blitz into, into Lanarus as well. But I feel like we're going to lose, we're going to lose Incineroar, whatever happens. Two minutes left. I can't believe this match has went so far. 
Okay, if he try and protects, then we know we're actually faster than it. Because I'm still a bit unsure to whether or not we're faster than the Tran. But the... F mm, okay, let's see what they're going to rock slide. Yeah, rock slide. And... Yep, okay, okay. That heat run all the time, getting all that health back that it needs. Okay, so we got Lecky back in now. <clears throat> the Heatran is gone before the Landorus, so we know the Heatran's faster than it. It's whether or not they protect here. I think they they have to. They have to go Earthquake, right? They have to go Earthquake and Heatwave. So they protect. And with the battle timer like running out until the battle ends, we need to get some damage off, like ASAP. Um, because otherwise we lose, I think. So I think we just attack and go Horn Leech and hope Horn Leech is enough to take the Landorus down. I think we just do it because of the, because otherwise, yeah, okay. If they protect there, then we pretty much lose, I think. Um, like with the timer going down as well. Okay, well we lose Regilecki. They've got a hope for Rock Slide crit, I guess, but I don't even know if that'll be enough. Bulu, come on, there we go. Okay, we win. Whoosh. <laughs> what a good match. What a good match. I've never had a match uh, in Series 7 or Series 9, obviously, going into this. Uh, go right down to the wire like that. So, very good team from my opponent uh, and a great match for us to kind of feature here today and takes the episode quite deep into the time. But um, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Shows off the team as well and uh, shows you kind of how the synergy kind of works in the team as well as how good the Tapu Bulu's been. I mean, I said at the start of the episode, I hope this changes my mind about Tapu Bulu and it certainly has. So without further ado, we'll get over to the rental code and remind you all of today's team. Okay, friends, once again, here is the rental code for today's team. Big shout out to Kirishiro uh, for providing this team and a massive congratulations for that third place finish in the second part of the Japan National Qualifiers. I do really wish him all the best for the final stage and I really hope to see him go on and win the whole thing. It would be amazing to see, you know, he's got some cracking like uh, accolades already to his name, World's performances japan nationals we've already mentioned so adding uh, another japanese national championship to his uh, array of titles that he's already got would be amazing to see uh do give him a follow go check out his content as always so there's the plug and uh, this team's just crazy isn't it it's just mad we've not really played the dust clops at all but like i said throughout i think maybe because i'm not super comfortable without the trick room variation there but it's got some really nice options to play around with and i think the team just performed so well in today's episode really happy we got that final one in where it was a real duke out right to the end of time with it and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it as well friends so we'll wrap it up there thank you so much as always for tuning in hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, i'll catch you for another episode on the channel very soon so until then take care and bye bye